All right, welcome back to my introduction to Allods Online. Going back over, this is the next part of our videos on the Astral. And uh, had to split it off into two different videos, so here we go. I've got my zombie tour bus in the background. You can also click off here and I can show you what it's like without all of the uh, ghost skin. Just the standard appearance of my ship. A little easier to see from up here. There she is. Ain't she a beauty? Now, if you don't know what you're doing, it's a little easier to not have all the extra effects on because they do kind of cloud up the front there and make it hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and, for now, get stuck in a wall and, uh, I mean, <clears throat> turn that off. And we'll take the ship out and show you what it's like out in the actual astral. Now, normally, I would try to do this with a crew, but I'm not planning on really going out anywhere special, so... Just to give you a feel for it. So, it's important to note that uh, before, when I was changing around devices on the ship, I had that little hammer up there. You cannot actually launch out into the astral with that hammer on, so be careful of that. Another thing to note is if you wanted to teleport to another Allod, you would have to do it from inside the hangar. You cannot teleport directly to an Allod from uh, the, the outside of the hangar. So once you've launched into the Astral, it's too late. So make sure you use your teleporting stuff before you launch, and uh, that'll be an option down here, this little button. Now, I don't have uh, any more teleport charges on me, and I also don't have my patron's blessing, my martyr's blessing, activated. That's a requirement for using the teleporters as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and sail. So I hit my turbine and click the red button. And here we are. So, you can see we are out, and this is what your map will look like while you're out in the astral. Um, just to make sure I'm not in anybody's way, I'm going to pull forward a little bit here. So, this is my motor for speed, and then my helm for turning here. So, I'll accelerate up a little bit, and then start turning the ship. And you can actually see there is Cania. Slow it down a bit. When you're navigating out in the astral, more often than not, you'll see people navigating via their map, because it's a lot easier to tell where you are and where other stuff is and your orientation. So you can see I actually can quite clearly see myself turning. And there is another ship over there. Right up there. They are probably about to go warp off. Yep, there they go. Now, if I run into this Allod, it will put me back into the hangar. So 
I'll go ahead and tell it to come to a stop. So over here you can see our current speed that is going down rather rapidly. This is astral emanations. It's kind of like a uh, temporary currency that you would use to power up certain parts of your ship or to use certain skills on your ship. And we'll go over some of those in just a moment. So the motor and the helm are both used at the same time. This is the helm, this is the motor. The turbine here, that is actually raising us. Can't see it very well. And you can lower us with that. There you go, raised and lowered. Now we can take a look up here at the visor again, and so we can get a better idea of what goes on with this. So, here is our ship, and you can see, kind of almost like the map, you can see all of the stuff that's in our area. You can zoom in and out. If you click on things, uh, well, you can't click on the little bits of rock, but here is a turret. Here is a turret. You can see the angle it is compared to your ship, the distance, and how far up or down it is from you. So everything's kind of about on the same plane. And then down here at the bottom, I've got several different abilities. These are all dependent on the visor that I have installed on my ship. Target acquisition, something that gives a uh, damage boost. I've got shield boost. I've got cooling that reduces my engine temperature. I've got uh, an ability that flips my ship around, so I'm facing the opposite direction. Uh, diversionary shot. I've got energy outbreak, which is just sort of a uh, burst of AOE damage directly from the ship. This is a thing that specifically does damage to demons. And then a little bit of a short distance teleport to bring you up to attack another ship. I don't think I've ever actually used that. So that is the visor. Back here we've got a couple of options as well. If you use your generator or your reactor, um, you have the option of doing an emergency shutdown, which just turns off the whole ship. I didn't need to do that, so it flipped itself back on again immediately. Um, that's a good thing to do if you're in a situation where you've got a very incompetent crew that is constantly draining more power than you can generate and that'll start causing all kinds of problems with your reactor you won't be able to use your shields properly so on and so forth you can hit that and it'll let the cooling go down on your ship um, self-destruct is something you would use on an enemy's reactor don't use it on your own reactor it's a bad idea and hole regeneration you can start and stop it hole regeneration is a way of repairing your ship on the fly while you're out in the astral if you've taken severe damage. You can see up here I've got a health bar. I'm at 100% right now and if I'm getting hit, if stuff gets through the shields and starts hitting the hull of the ship, that starts going down. So if I get down to like let's say 10-15% well I'm gonna be a bit worried that I might not make it back to the harbor in one piece I might come back here and hit the whole regeneration. You don't want to come hit this any time that you have damage done to your ship because for each tick of the whole regeneration, uh, it does heal your ship up quite a bit, but it will actually take a chip off of your maximum HP for the ship. So it does a bit of uh, semi-permanent damage. So. I'll never get that back up to 100% without 
changing stuff. Why am I moving? I'm not sure. Okay. Anyways, so, yeah, use that with discretion. So, the more you use the whole regeneration, the less of your max HP you're going to have. You can get that back up to 100% again, though, if you're back in the hangar and you actually do a, a proper repair job in the hangar. It will fix that back up to 100% for you. So, it's not really permanent damage, but close to it. Um, now, I'm sure everybody wants to see the cannons. Depending on the cannons, they'll have a different cooldown. I'm not shooting at anything, so... It's going to say I missed on every single one of these. Some cannons have multiple shots. Or very quick cooldowns. You can see there is a cooldown bar up above the cannons. So it lets you know once they're done reloading and they can be fired again. Upstairs, this cannon has multiple shots. Mid-ranged astral shot, mid-ranged acid shot, and a mid-ranged fire shot. And they do different damage types and will react differently to ship's shields uh, depending on the type of shield that you're shooting them at. So some might do less damage to holes and more damage to shields. Some might do more damage to demons and less damage to ships. Some might do more damage to uh, the hole and less damage to the shield. So it's kind of a situational thing. Uh, now the helm and the turbine, you can't really do much of anything with back here. You can only replace those. But the motor does have one option for you. It's a boost. If you hit this button, your ship will start moving very rapidly in a straight line. There is a drawback to that. Uh, only the captain can cancel it. And you can't turn. It disables all of your steering mechanisms. So if you hit that boost, then you're just going to be going really fast in a straight line. So. Make sure you're lined up before you try using that. Um, the captain of the ship can cancel it, or anyone else can cancel it if they go back to the motor and use it. But the captain is able to cancel it from a, a button right up here. It'll show up just like a, a bonus uh, buff on their bar here. And they can just right-click on it to stop it. Artillery, if you use that, it's going to look like this. You have two options. You've got artillery in safe mode, which will shoot. It deals a little bit less damage, but it'll try to keep from overheating. And then you've got the without limits, which will fire your uh, artillery with the maximum amount of damage it can deal. Uh, but it doesn't care whatsoever about overheating your ship's reactor. So we'll go ahead and fire this with limits. Now watch, this is the ship temperature gauge. So that starts heating up really fast. And it'll turn itself off because I was using safety mode. And there goes my reactor cooling itself back down. So that's what it looks like when you're overloading your reactor. So when it's blue, it's still safe here. Once it gets up to here, it starts getting red. And once you actually max it out, it could very well cause your reactor to blow up which, depending on the reactor you have, may actually blow up your entire ship. So you do need to be careful about that. Like I mentioned before, it all kind of comes down to your balance. So even doing something like firing one of these cannons does cause a little bit of heat to the reactor. Also, shields. Shields need to be manually refired. So you see this button here? It'll regenerate the shield. And to do that, it will destroy the rest of the shield that it's currently got. Now, right now it's full because we're not being attacked out here. But if I hit this, that shield goes all the way down to nothing. And you can see it starts to regenerate. There it goes. This is the cooldown right now that's charging up down here before I can do that again. 
So if they're able to break through this shield before that cooldown's back up, I might have a problem because I'll be taking damage until I can regenerate that shield again. Different shields have different amounts of damage they can take before they break. Uh, they also have possibly faster cooldowns. Some of them have less energy cost. Since it's recharged, I can show you. That heats up quite a bit more than the cannon fire does. Not so much, though, that it will put me in a worrisome spot. And coming up here, this will be the last spot that we need to look at. This is the navigation station. This is the second most important part of a ship's crew. This is how you tell where you're going. First most important being the person actually steering the ship, just in case you're wondering. Um, so you can see here I've got the ship, and then I've got these little pathways, the dotted lines, in three different colors. Those pertain to my map. If I bring that up, you can see I've got a green, a blue, and a red. These are all different vortexes. Those are basically portals to the next section. And likewise, I've got a green, a blue, and a red. So if I wanted to go over to this section, I would go through the red portal, and that would take me to there. And if I wanted to get to an allod, I would first find an allod via the buttons down here. So scan for enemy ships. Hopefully there's none. Nope, no enemy ships were found. Scan for wormholes. Wormholes are how you get to different sectors. So, i.e., how I would get from the sector where I currently am here. You can see my ship icon. And a wormhole would take me to sector either 3 or to sector 8, because you can see they're connected there. So, there would be a wormhole somewhere in this sector for 8, and there's going to be one more for 3. Scan for small allods, so this will be the allods that I would go to to try to get some loot. Scan for large allods, that would be like home continents. So that would be Cania or Nezebgrad, or there's one more that's uh, abbreviated IOR, we call it EOR, and that's the Isle of Revelation, which is something you'll learn more about endgame as well. Then there's route tracing, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then misalignment, which is kind of like a cloaking field. And it works on your ship. It's kind of the emergency, oh crap, I've just pissed off everything in this sector. I need to disappear for a moment button. Um, if you've got a bunch of demons chasing you, it causes them to drop aggro on you. And notice all of these things say they require... X amount of astral emanations. That would be this stuff right here. Now, the cost for these is really, really low right now, and that's because we're in a really easy sector. We're in the absolute bare minimum base sector, so that's why everything is really, really cheap. These costs go up quite quickly once you get out to more advanced sectors. So anyway, let's take a look here and scan for a small allot. And it found one back here. But I don't know how to get there. I could take a chance and just sail out to the blue section here and hope that one of those sections will show up connecting to it. Because once I go here, it'll show me the next branch off in each direction. Or I can use this Trace Route button. So I just scan for small allods. If I click on Trace Route, it shows me, oh, if I'd gone the blue way, in fact, it doesn't connect to that. If I want to get to this allot, I've got to go through, wow, all kinds of stuff. So first I would go through the red portal here. Then I would have to go through the next green portal, once I got through there. Then through red, then through blue, then through red again, and then through blue again, and then back through green, and then through red, and then I should be able to see an allod show up, kind of like this, somewhere in that section. So 
So things aren't always quite what they seem. Now let's line up and take a look through one of these portals. So there's one almost straight up ahead of me there. I think I can kind of see it vaguely back there. Let's zoom into first person for this. Try not to run into stuff out here. It's generally not such a good idea. It can actually cause damage to your ship. So that is one of the vortexes up there. So to go into that vortex, all I've got to do is sail into it. slow myself down. I don't want to come out too fast on the other side. And here we are. You can see there's a bunch of demons floating around. Mousing over them, I can see their health and their demon type. The guys that are kind of pinkish red are typically the easiest ones. There's these guys here. They can be a bit of a problem. Uh, more so at, of course, the harder areas. And then there's big, big white ones that generally you just don't want to mess with, period. Another thing to be careful of when sailing is you don't want to leave this circle. If you do, you will start taking damage. Okay, I've ticked those guys off. You can see they're all coming at me. And we're taking damage. Normally, I would try to sail around while I'm doing this, but uh, I think I'll be okay. And you can see there, they kind of home in on the enemies. Ah, oh, thank you for moving. It makes you a lot easier to shoot. As you can see here, the shields have been depleted just a little bit. So... I'll kick that back up. And they didn't manage to break through the shields, so we actually took no real damage from that. But there we go, they're gone. Now sometimes guys will drop loot and it'll show up as little chests on your deck right up here if a demon drops loot, because obviously I'm not going to go jump off of that and pick it up. Um, another thing to note, if you die out here, like I mentioned before, you don't go to purgatory you'll go into the back of the ship there. And in fact, why don't I just show you that? If I jump overboard, I will die. <laughs> and here we are, back in the back of the ship. And I've got a little bit of a death timer there. And we're back up. Good as new. That's about all there is to it. So, let's turn ourselves back around and head back for home. So 
So we came out of the blue portal. We're going to want to go right back through that blue portal to get back home. Oops, a bit too far. Sometimes your camera isn't quite aligned with the front of the ship, so given that you have to manually put it there. Fortunately, the portals are pretty forgiving about uh, landing on stuff. And here we are, back home. Now notice this is one of the allods here. This is, well, we just came from there. That's where we're going to go home. Um, but notice how it's colored in. It's got uh, some vibrance to it there. Every so often you'll see other allods that look the same, but they're kind of grayed out. And those are allods that you cannot go to. Um, it's not like you don't meet the requirement or nothing. It's just simply there's not really an allod there for you to land on. But you'll still see them. So you can only land on ones that are actually colored in like that. And there we go. That's about right. Ah, looks like they just barely nicked that shield, too. That'll automatically restore, though, once we're back in the hangar. Not to worry. And poof, here we are, back in the hangar. So, that about sums it up for the astral bit, um, and how to get around and navigate and do stuff in the astral. Um, I hope the video was informative for you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. So, there you go. This is going to conclude the majority of my Allods videos. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I might put out a few more here and there, as I do more stuff uh, in the game itself, but... That's going to be, for the most part, the end of my introduction to Allods. So, again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the whole series. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.